continue with uh, 2015 KCC computer paper one. Uh, that is question 16, as we have done uh, in, our previous, in our previous videos. We shall still tackle question 16, uh, which comes from form three, elementary programming. Therefore, answer question 16 and any other three. We are just interested in question 16. Therefore, part A, list four web programming languages. Then part B, state four ways in which a programmer can make program code is to follow. Then part C, we shall draw a program flowchart to represent the following pseudocode, nine marks. Therefore, the program begins. Then we have where scores exist. That is if whether there is any max or not. That you initialize uh, sum to zero, initialize counter to zero, input a score, increment counter by one, add a score to sum. If there are more scores to read, compute average as sum divided by counter, then print the the average else input next score uh, and if else print no records exist and where that is and that is uh, a complicated flowchart but i shall be in a position actually to uh, handle it therefore let's start with the first question list four web scripting languages and therefore we have several uh, web scripting languages found in the in the market today or in the world but uh, uh, most popular ones we have html which stands for hypertext markup language we have javascript we have the upcoming cascading style sheets or css we also have vb script we have xml which stands for extensible markup language we also have PHP, very popular. It stands for Hypertext Preprocessor. We also have Dreamweaver, front page. And uh, we have more, more and more up to actually that we can actually list. Therefore, those are some of the popular. Therefore, the popular ones you would have written HTML, JavaScript, PHP, and Dreamweaver. Those are actually so much popular. Therefore, then we can proceed to question number two. List four ways in which a programmer can make program code easy to follow for marks. Therefore, we have ways to do that, uh, ways to make sure that uh, uh, a program is easy to lead. Therefore, number one, use of modules or short blocks of programs. You can make your programs to uh, various small programs called subprograms. Then, number two, Test, prog test formatting of reserved words, that is uh, reserved words like input, output, read, write, you can use board or you can use different colors to differentiate them from other codes. Uh, the next point, you can ident codes to make them readable. Now, if you look at the this one, look at this code, it has been very well written. This is called indentation. Look at how this code has been written by the examiner. This is called indentation. It is made that way for easy, for easy reading. Then use of comments or internal documentations. Now you can use non-executable statements inside the program code to make sure that whoever comes to edit your codes can know what you are doing. We call them comments or internal documentation. Then you can use blank lines to separate blocks of code statement. That is in between one code and the other, you can skip a line. That is use blank lines to separate blocks of code statement for readability. Therefore, those are some of the, the uh, ways of making a program more and more readable. Then we can proceed to the next question. Draw a program flowchart to represent the following pseudocode. Therefore, we shall go straight and draw that one. Therefore, we shall launch a new Microsoft Word program. Then go to layout, 
make sure that our layout is on portrait so that it can allow wrong uh, pages. Therefore, we shall draw the shapes that uh, are supposed to be used. Therefore, we are supposed to use uh, start that one. That one is a must to be used. Then make sure format is active here so that you can click and remove the color. Then you shall, shall use, you can get more here. Just go to flow chart, then we can go to uh, flow charts, then go to uh, decision. Therefore, you are making a decision somewhere that way. Then we shall also have some input that way. Then we shall have the one to read the scores. Read the scores. That is the input to read the scores. Then we shall have a bit of processing done here. Uh, then another decision will be made. Then we shall have some uh, output there. Then we shall have the end of the program. We shall have the end of the program there. And the best one is to use the best one to terminate is to use uh, an, old, an ellipse, this one. Therefore, after doing that, we shall also uh, have a decision that is an output. We expect to have an output here, somewhere there. And then also we expect to have another output there. Then we shall have some processing done here. Therefore, the next thing is to remove uh, this color. Just click and then go and uh, click the design you want. Just to make sure that the inner color is not there. That is the blue color. Then we proceed doing so. We proceed doing so. Then the next thing is to put the direction. We need to put the direction of uh, these flowcharts, that is the, the direction of uh, the, our flowchart. If we go to insert uh, shape, then we take the arrow, then we can draw the direction. Uh, now we can go on drawing the direction this way. That one is very important, showing how the program is actually flowing. It is flowing that way. So, so flowing downwards towards this. Uh, then from there, uh, from this point here, this one we, we expect increments to be done from this decision. If our increment will be done from there, then we shall expect this one to go up that way. Uh, then uh, we expect it to we expect this one this one to lead to come to this point we expect this one to eat them that way. Then uh, we also expect from this score here, from this point, we expect this one to go down. Of course, you would have used an arrow to show direction, but this one goes down this way. That way, then, then from there we expect it to go and terminate. Therefore, for, from here we expect it to be very up to then this point here, then it goes to terminate. Uh, then from there we need now to uh, write 
down. Therefore, you write as I explained. Therefore, we right click, just right click, add text, right click, add text to make sure that when you go to this point, you will be in a position to add text without struggling. You just right click, then you choose add text, right click, add text that way, right click, add text, right click, add text, right click, add text. Then from there, now we can start our program as we explain it. Therefore, we shall have start. Then from here, we shall have to enter any score uh, here. Any scores. Therefore, you are entering any scores there. And here, we shall uh, base it on that. No, no, no records. No records found. If there is no record found, no records found, then it will exit. If there are any score, if there is that student has enough score, no records found, then it will just go down here and exit. And therefore, this one is stop. For that one is for stop. Then we shall go down here. Therefore, this one we have been told to initialize sum to zero and also counter. Counter equals to zero. Therefore, those are the two things that we are supposed to initialize and we initialize them as process. Therefore, we are initializing counter, we are also initializing sum. Then from there, this is input, therefore, we shall be reading read score or just input. Input score. Now, since it has been any score there, you can just input score. Input score. Then from there, uh, this is process, therefore you expect a process to take place here, and therefore sum, sum equals to sum plus score. Then the next point will be counter. We can make sure that there is no space. Therefore counter equals to counter plus one. Now this is increment. Then this one's are supposed to be centered. Then after now having that, you have been told to, to, to capture more scores. Therefore, you shall have a decision more scores. Do we have more scores? More scores. Therefore, if no, then we shall we shall uh, actually if there are no scores. That is, if condition is true, therefore, if this point here, if there are no scores, therefore, we shall go to this line. Do we have more scores? This point, yes. If we have more scores, then we shall go to this point here and then uh, compute the average. Average equals to sum divided by counter that way then we shall print average and then repeat print average print average that way then we read again the score that or we read the score you can use the word read here we then read the score then if no the therefore this one we shall have no exit here This one would have continued. Therefore, if there is this is no, then it goes down here. That is if no. Insert shape. Or this one should be if no. If no, no results, then uh, that one goes down. So you just go to format, shape or train or train. That way. Therefore, the flowchart would have been like that. That is start in a scores, counter, initialize, read score. Then uh, from here, it, it goes to another point. Are uh, there more scores? Uh, yes. Then we go to average, then print score. And then the flowchart again now uh, proceeds. Therefore, it would have been like that. 
therefore more scores if there are more scores compute input next score therefore for that matter you would have uh, you would have also included something here I have seen something you have skipped therefore you also need to have another input here according to the question here we need an input that is read score according to how the, the question is set therefore we would have also gotten that one read score then that way therefore that, that flow chart is now complete depending on how the examiner has explained we are supposed to, how we are supposed to uh, to do it uh, then probably some other student would also have drawn it otherwise but there are many ways of actually doing the same thing but uh, for now that is how that question was supposed to be uh, answered that is in 2015 uh, KCC yeah, that is in 2015 KCC, uh, computer paper one. Therefore, thank you very much for watching. Okay, see you next time. God bless you.